Hey, and welcome to Money Among Monday. Again, why is it called Money Among Monday? Because the more you make, the more you can support and give. When good people master wealth creation, they benefit everybody, including their own family, themselves, and society, because they support very good things. Now, today I was working with a client, and I'm going to use... My work with a client can provide a case study that really helps people understand the importance of this work. And in my experience with the client today, it was deeply uh, profound from the perspective of how much a person's unconscious will override any form of logical thinking. You know, I'm going to be honest with you, I'd, I'm laughing constantly. I see all these gurus out there teaching, really good quality teachings about how to build businesses, how to invest really well. Truth is, it doesn't make any difference unless the person's unconscious mind's cleaned up. Not one thing changes. Not one thing. And this is nothing against the gurus that, that uh, teach good quality strategies. It's just they don't have the expertise or understanding. So I'm going to run you through a four-quadrant mon module. I've probably done this before. Some of you would have seen it. But it really sets the seen for what I want to teach. So the first thing, and you probably can't read this because I know when I do Facebook Lives, it's all backwards. So I'll walk you through it. In this four quadrant model, we look at your entrepreneurial thinking. So whenever I work with a client, I'm looking at that person's entrepreneurial thinking, and that's regardless of whether they're an investor or a business owner. Now, most people have been trained to be a resource, meaning you've been trained since birth to be compliant to some big power structure that pays your money. And that's basically the education system. It sets people up so they're disempowered and they trade time for money. Um, and it downgrades the entrepreneurial thinking. So entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial thinking means that you build assets. You build assets that make money on your behalf. And Specifically, in building assets, you build those assets so that they run separately from you. You don't have to be there all the time. To uh, You're not involved in the money-making aspect of those assets. That's the only way to create real wealth. And as I said, most people, through the education system, have been um, conditioned to be a resource, not control resources. And of course, that works really well for a capitalistic system that needs people to be cogs in the, me the mechanical wheel of income production. You need cogs in the system. So the people that control resources, and if you're selling time for money, you are a resource um, for others to make money from. Now the problem is I work with lots of business owners and, and investors who have all come through an education system that dumbs down their entrepreneurial thinking. So when we're working with a client, we're sort of ascertaining their their level of, of entrepreneurial thinking. And then we come to skill set, whether they have the skill set to implement the strategies uh, or thoughts or ideas that their entrepreneurial thinking comes up with. Uh, the next one is structure. That is, okay, if you come up with ideas um, and you've got the skill set, if you want things to run at scale efficiently, and if you want things to run in your assets that you're building separate from you, then there must be really good quality systems and automate it as much as possible. And if you can't automate them, you have staff to run those systems so you can go on holiday, have fun. And by the way, that's how I managed to travel the world surfing with my family for many years, building assets and resources as a result of my entrepreneurial thinking, having the skill set, to pull that off, my ideas off, and setting up structures and systems so that things could run without me. Now, all good coaches teach that, and there are plenty of good coaches. There's heaps of charlatans, but there's also really good coaches out there that teach structure, entrepreneurial thinking, and skill set. No one teaches about the unconscious. Most people that teach about the unconscious might have really good people skills, but they have no strategic skills whatsoever, or very low-level strategic skills very low levels of entrepreneurial thinking. They're good with people, they might help that person access their unconscious, but they can't give them everything. We do all those four things, but 
most importantly, we have a very rare skill set, and because we can read people, meaning we can see their unconscious patterns within you know, a few minutes of meeting them, where a normal coach would have no idea about what's going on on an unconscious level. So, straight to the case study. Um, today I work with the client, as I said, and I'll go back. Her, her present scenario is that she has been, uh, she's in a service business. I won't go into exact, the exact detail. She's in a service business. She uh, sells her time to clients. So she's trading time for money. And she also has an offsider that uh, she shifts clients to when she's too full. Um, and she's come to us because she would like to earn more money and have a better running business. And just case in point for a second, and I said this to her today, the problem for anyone that trades time for money as their dominant income model, because I trade time for money um, because I love doing what I do and it keeps me sharp and it keeps me in touch with people. Um, but if you're trading time for money, you're, you, you are a roadblock in your business development. Let me explain what I mean. If you are trading time for money, you've probably got to do 30 billable hours a week at least to sort of just get a little bit of money in to run your business. So if you're doing 30 billable hours, what that really means is you can't work on your business because after your 30 billable hours, you don't have a lot of money. So you can, it's really hard to, to pay contractors and that to look after your books or do things in your business. You have to do everything yourself. And then you have to market, and you've only got like three or four hours, if that, to market, and you're working 60, 70 hours a week. You are a roadblock. And that's a ridiculous way of trying to run a business. In reality, it, it's, it just can't be successful. Not if your idea of success is <laughs> having uh, free time, having a relaxed life, like you may want to work quite a lot, but at least enjoying work. You know, there's nothing great about trading time for money for 35 hours and having to rush to get that done and this done and that done because you don't have the capital. So coming back to this model, as we as entrepreneurs who are building uh, self-managed assets that run separately from us making money, we are moving away from uh, unscalable businesses to scalable businesses. So as an example, I could work with one person which I do, as I said, from time to time. I have a small stable of clients that I work with, and I, I work with clients when they start our journey with us. So we have whole protocols and programs that um, take care of our clients as they move through their uh, process of, of achieving what they want, but I um, will work with them in the initial stages and then from time to time throughout the year that they work with us. Again, I like that. I enjoy it, but there's no way I'd be doing it all the time. So when we look at scalable income, we're looking at no end on income. So if you trade time for money, then there's no, there's no scalability. So as an example, if I after this, I'm going to be going and working and teaching, and I'm probably going to have about 40, 50 people in that group. Um, and uh, that's me teaching many people. That's got more scale and just as much reach. So... With this particular person, um, she wants to scale and create some more passive or leveraged income. However, and let me step back. So she's in a service business, small service business, her and her offsider. Her offsider is uh, a cost of sales, not an expense, meaning her offsider only gets paid when she works with one of the clients that my client gets her. That's a good thing. Um, but around the time of the GFC, this particular client ran a 30, uh, she, she employed about 35 people and it was in a particular industry sector that got really whacked with the GFC. So it, it uh, with, with people that were involved with building. So the moment you have 30, 35 staff, typically you're starting to build a business that kind of 
takes a lot of effort and energy and there's a lot of people issues and there's a lot of responsibility. And so if you're running 35 staff, you've got huge payroll, huge expenses. And so when the GFC happened, and typically what goes on once there's a tightening economy, uh, people stop spending on improving their uh, properties. They get a little bit wary about the property market, so they stop uh, spending as much on builders. And by the way, that's just happened over the last little while and the RBA have just cut interest rates trying to stimulate consumer spending in the property market. But when that happened to her, and I don't know the time frame, it was probably about six to seven months, all of a sudden, all of their income just dropped. And, and at the same time, they've got this huge payroll. They've got these off offices and, and vehicles and staff. And so this particular lady, she's working really hard trying to find a strategy, trying to find a way out of this, and everything she tried didn't work, and they ended up going bankrupt. Now, here's the thing. When she went bankrupt, when she went bankrupt, what happened is, on the unconscious level of her mind, she was traumatized. She was full of terror. She was full of uh, pain, full of guilt. And anyone that's ever had an experience like that can understand what I mean. It's a very painful experience. Now, when uh, there's a trauma on the unconscious level, uh, the body and the mind goes to protect it as a survival mechanism. So she ended up with beliefs like nothing will work, a lot of fear on her unconscious, in her unconscious. And I'll explain more about this in a second, about why this is important to understand. So she... Um, after she sort of gets rights herself a little bit and after a few years she goes back into business as I said in the service business and it's just herself with her rent and as I said earlier now she's locked into this trading time for money model which she wants to get out of and I want her to get out of this is why we went to the entrepreneurial part of her now here's a key lesson first of all if you have a uh, Highly emotional belief structures on the emotional level associated with fear or self-doubt, which she had because she'd had a very traumatizing experience after the GFC when she lost her 35 staff business and went bankrupt. The unconscious locks in with these belief systems that say things like, be careful, it's very fear oriented, don't, don't, don't ever do anything that looks like what you did in the past. I'll say that again. The unconscious says, don't do anything like what you've done in the past because that's how her, how, her, how her unconscious took the lesson, right? So GFC happens, she goes bankrupt. Her unconscious, which is often childlike, there's incredible powers in the unconscious, by the way, there's incredible information in the unconscious, but it's also where we store traumatized memories and viewpoints. So the unconscious is just going, don't ever get big again. Don't ever dream big again. Just keep it small. Because if it's small, if, if, if anything ever happens again, if there's another GFC, oh, I'm not going to hurt other people. I don't have staff. I've got, I'll, 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 I'll be able to I'll feel safer in this. Now, the problem with that is the moment you have an unconscious that's wired that way, you will downgrade your ability to think strategically from the entrepreneur. So if we, we come back to this, the entrepreneur is intellectual, it's academic, it's logical, it's analytical, and it, in a good quality business person or entrepreneur, it's not impacted by emotion. So it can, you can logically work out how to make a lot of money. You can logically work out what you need to do to make a lot of money. You can logically to work out what are the best strategies and that's what happens when you train your entrepreneurial mind in our, our bigger program. So that's what we're doing with our clients, helping them develop their entrepreneurial thinking so that they can really, really work out how to make money and to input good quality strategies. However, and this is again the important part, because of her experiences during the GFC and the terror and fear and belief systems that were wired in when she went bankrupt, the fear and terror actually downgrade her ability to think properly and the fear and terror are only there to help her survive based on those fear and terror belief systems. And as I said, 
those fear and terror beliefs. Is that don't do anything that looks like what you've done in the past. You get to understand the unconscious. When we talk about imprinted belief systems, it's kind of dumb. It's not smart. Now, it's still, and just so you understand this, it is a survival mechanism. So you can't hate this part. You, you can't consider it a sabotage. It's just saying, don't do anything like you did in the past. Remember, she had a bigger business in the past that went bankrupt because of the GFC. Now, there's also a physical component to this because the moment there's fear and terror set up in your system, um, because there's a, a triggered unconscious belief system, you'll experience anxiety, you'll experience fear. Actually, the amygdala in the brain gets triggered, which is part of the flight or fight um, uh, part of the brain. It's the reptilian brain, the oldest part of the brain. And once that gets triggered, it triggers the adrenal um, system. So you've got a lot of uh, adrenaline and cortisol running through the body, which, by the way, will aid you quicker. Um, but it corrupts uh, good quality thinking. So we know that stress impacts the hippocampus uh, memory uh, stress impacts uh, the prefrontal cortex which is how you evolve your intelligence by developing a prefrontal cortex um, so there are very physical reasons for why uh, terror and uh, these really strong sabotages associated with uh, uh, traumatized emotions impact the the ability for the brain to think there's also another reason because the survival part that's sitting in the unconscious that, that's been experienced or, or has arisen through the trauma of the, the bankruptcy for this person, it's saying, again, just don't do it. Just don't do it. From its perspective, by staying small, thinking small, she's safer. Remember? She got whacked um, by the GFC because she had been in expanded thinking. She had gone, well, you know, I can have my dreams. I can go and grow this business. But our unconscious doesn't realize something really, really important. And the first thing is this, that if, so as an example, I've, I've had times in my life where I've had failures and mistakes or, or, or failures that have happened in business or investing. And um, like the client that I'm working with, the first emotional reaction is one like, don't do that ever again. <laughs> Um, and that's what most people do, but because I understand this work, I start to work differently. So intellectually, what is the lesson? Well, why did that happen? How can I avoid that again and still go for my dreams? How can I avoid that so that doesn't happen? Um, even though I, I, because I want to go and grow something bigger, because that's what I really, really want from here, my heart. Okay. So, in about twenty minutes. I help this client see that her unconscious belief systems were downgrading her ability to think smartly as an entrepreneur. Um, and this is where it's really important. See, your entrepreneurial subpersonality tied to logic and the uh, analyzer has the ability to learn from the lessons of the GFC that she experienced, the bankruptcy she experienced through the GFC. Of course, the unconscious doesn't. And this is the difference between feeling and thinking. If you've got well-developed critical thinking skills, you'll tend to develop entrepreneurial thinking and develop the logical and analytical aspect of self. So, just to show you. So, with this client, whenever I suggest a strategy to her, her unconscious goes, no, no. Again, based on that key principle, that her unconscious says, don't do anything expanded. Stay small. I help her to see that, and then I shift her into just thinking from the entrepreneurial perspective. So we looked at, well, why did that happen to you in the GFC? First of all, she was, um, uh, forget the world, my brain's fried, I've had a very, very busy day, but it, she's, 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 in, she's only operating in a niche that, and it's a renowned niche. If you're operating in the niche of builders and the building industry, then every time there is an economic correction, a, a downturn, even whispers of a downturn, people stop spending on builders. It's one of the first things that gets whacked. So that was her first intellectual or entrepreneurial mistake, being working in a niche that easily gets impacted through um, uh, economic downturns. Now, interestingly enough, I was saying today, and 
I, I'm not going to say that this was any form of strategic thinking on my part. I powered through the GFC, and I powered through the GFC because I, uh, at that stage, was tr were training beauty uh, therapists and hair salons. I worked for Weller and Worldwide Salon Marketing, and I would be training at all their conferences and working with heaps of their salon owners. Some of them were small salons, some of them multiple salon owners. Um, and of course, when the GFC happened, I was like, oh, well, this is going to be interesting. But I soon found out that hair and beauty thrives in a downturning market. Um, and again, for good reason, because women will start to cut all their other expenses. They won't go to the restaurants. They go to the movies less. But the thing that they will not let go of, because times are hard, is they want to spend more money on looking beautiful because it's the last thing they hang on to. And I really understand that. So that was the first mistake. She was in a, a marketplace that was uh, easily influenced by uh, even the economic rumours about downturns or recessions. So in a new position, uh, business, I'm working with her to develop scale, as I said. And um, again, I always get the no, because the unconscious grows no, don't expand. Um, so what I shared with her in her new position business because on the unconscious level she's worried about another recession and I explained her, I showed her how do you recession proof because again if you just buy the emotional response from the unconscious which will be no if you've had that traumatic experience no clothes be small which downgrades the brain you, you you're not really seeing what needs to be learned as an entrepreneur and you won't implement the strategies that are required to actually survive uh, another downturn so the first one that I taught her was that she needs to outmarket her uh, competitors. And I'll throw the next statement in that, and it says outposition. And again, this is all part of her entrepreneurial thinking. Outmarket and outposition. Now, what does outmarket and outposition that mean? It means that you must work to market harder than your competition, or work to market better than your competition, so that prospects see you as the number one uh, choice. And there's a whole bunch of things, and if you're interested in this, make sure you, you just chuck a comment below. If you're interested in this, you need to join our bigger programs, our entrepreneurial programs, because there's a whole bunch of things that goes into outpositioning your competition. How you must communicate your competitive advantages, your unique selling uh, proposition. And often to do that, you've got to overcome sort of uh, low self-worth or low self-esteem, which will be projecting into your viewpoint of your products and services. You have to be communicate to the marketplace why you are the expert, why you are the specialist, in a narrow niche, by the way. Not in a wide niche, in a narrow niche. Um, and just be positioned as the number one person. You see, if you're positioned as the number one person in any niche, you don't get price buyers, you get value buyers. I'll explain this a little bit more in a moment. Um, I also suggested to her that she uh, positions into a wealthy marketplace. Uh, now, why would we position into a wealthy marketplace? Well, first of all, in downturning economies, wealthy people make more money. So they have a whole different set of rules. If you're working with the uh, lower, the working or the middle class, when there's, an econ when there's a, a downturn in the market, they're like... <sighs> so, there's an example. Uh, or entrepreneurial or, or investing type thinkers. So as an example, we've just gone through a downturn, certainly in property, and all the lots of property investors are, oh, I'm so, so nervous. I was excited, right? I was excited. I'm going like, God, there's the deals of the century. So uh, again, if you market uh, products and services to the wealthy class, and if you get marketing services and profit, uh, products to the wealthy class, you have to work at out-marketing and out-positioning your competitors so you're number one choice. Now, those three things, out-marketing, out-positioning, and targeting the wealthy, uh, ensure you are, are recession-proofed. They just ensure it. There's just three strategies. They're no-brainers. I could deepen into the uh, knowledge of, of, of why that, that works. But you're, you've become immune-proof to recession. So again, and now why am I saying this? I've got other things here. Oh, the other, last one was dropping running costs. So a really good thing to do. Is so in my business, uh, as an example, I'm spending a, a fair bit at the moment, and probably will for the next three, four, maybe six months. Um, but I have a business, and I always run a model like this 
that I can drop to minuscule running costs at any point in time. So again, as I said, she was overexposed in a market that easily gets impacted by negative economic news and had huge running costs. So, you know, you, you only need to go 5% under break even and in a, in a business with a huge, huge running costs, you're done and dusted within two months. Okay, so if you don't have the capital backing you that can ride out recessions, um, you want to build, and I do have the capital too, but I would rather build a model that, a business model that, worst case scenario, I'm able to drop the running costs of that really quickly if there is an economic shift. She couldn't. So, you know, we look at cost of sales versus running expenses. Cost of sales is, is something that you want to concentrate on. Cost of sales means that you only pay for it when you pay the expense when you sell it versus operating costs, having huge operating costs and relying on good quality economic situations. And when the economic situation doesn't work in your favour, you're going to be whack because of what you um, carry as a running cost. So all these things, again, are just basic uh, strategic approaches to uh, recession-proofing a business and ensuring high levels of profit. The reason I'm going here is, again, her unconscious, based on her past trauma, constantly downgraded her ability to see those as just absolutely practical ways of moving forward and, and future-proofing profit and future-proofing uh, or making her business recession-proof. So again, I suppose if we just bring this down into a nutshell, you know what? You can have the best, best strategic thinking in the world. You can have the best strategic advice in the world. But if you don't clean up your unconscious and your unconscious beliefs and challenge them, nothing shifts or, or changes. Um, now, listen, if you like this, and you should just share some comments below about what you got out of... Uh, today's Money Monk Monday. And if you've got any questions for me, chuck, chuck them below as well. And if you're interested in working on some of these unconscious beliefs, just check out our Whole Brain Wealth course. I mean, you know, you might think it's costing you money. It's not. It's actually costing you money not to do it. And that's a fact. It's costing you money not to do it. It's costing you money when you don't work with people like myself or have other mentors that you work with. Because when you're left to your own self, this part of you will control you, your unconscious. You need to work with experts that can assist you in evolving and growing. I walk my talk. I spend uh, an incredible amount of money every year on people that help me uh, grow and evolve. And it's amazing what you get when you do that. Even committing to that shifts things for you. Anyway, hope you get a lot from it and see you uh, on Wednesday for Wisdom Wednesday. Um, and this week I've got a few other things that I'm going to be sending through. I, I talked uh, a couple of weeks ago. I actually did a, a my worst live presentation ever um, uh, on a very important subject about the, the evolution of the human species and why we have so much conflict on the planet uh, uh, at the moment. It's horrible what... what we are seeing and experiencing probably the worst of I have seen in my lifetime. Uh, and we've got factions of all the different thought forms or ideologies really at war with each other. And uh, I did the presentation. I didn't like it. I thought it was a week. It's, it's actually a subject that I'm used to presenting. Or I have done for many years, but I haven't done it for a year. So it was a bit weak. Um, and it's powerful information. So as I promised, I'm going to go and redo it. And I've been sort of sitting about how sitting and pondering about how best to do that and I worked that out today my unconscious gave it to me in a flash so over this week I'll also be addressing that um, teaching which is what's going on, on the planet it's got nothing to do with investing or um, uh, business but I just think it's a really important and insightful topic in fact the model I use can be used if you want to market to people um, if you want to understand people as a marketer and a business owner as an investor uh, will help you understand staff and everybody, um, but I, I will be applying it to how, how do you navigate all these changes that are happening on the planet? How do you even understand it? How, how do you approach them wisely? So I, I plan to whack into some of that this week. Anyway, have a good night. See ya.